I'm my own ghost co-host. And welcome, this is Sasha Bronwasser, Stampa number 18. First time, yes, you may applaud. Thank you. So happy to see you here on the 18th edition of Stampa, first time back after COVID, first time a live show with a full audience. I cannot be more happier than this. Um, and what an, uh, what an edition. It's been built up in two, three weeks maybe because of, of course, of what is happening in Ukraine. Um, today we're, we're having a fundraiser already this afternoon. It started with workshops, performative dinner. Now there's the talk show, there's an exhibition, there are performances tonight. It goes on and on and on. But there's one main objective is that, that you donate. So this evening is going to cost you money. I hope you know. I hope you're prepared. I think most of you of the Dutch, are there any Dutch artists here? Are, yeah? Or should I ask, are there people that are funded by the Mondrian Fund? So in a way or another, you can easily spend 100 euros from your burs to tonight. I mean, that's a good goal. Today we're raising money for the Museum Crisis Fund. People come in, take a chair. There's lots of chairs. And as long as I'm talking, you're not. So we're raising money for uh, the, the Museum Crisis Center. I'll explain later on what that is. And the Ukrainian Emergency Art Fund. In short, we raise money for both art in Ukraine and for artists and art workers. Um, and there is a QR code everywhere in the space and also online. If you're watching online, please go below, scan the QR code. Also, you have either you have a Mondrian fund bourse or not. You can donate anyhow. Donate tonight for Ukrainian art and art workers. I like the word art workers. I think it's derived from the sex workers. <laughs> Used to be artists, curators, whatever, and now it's art workers. I have a question. Is there any romantic couple in the, in the room? Yeah? OK. Because we've got a donation from our neighbor, which is the Condo Marie. Blue or yellow? Any yellow? OK. You've been together for a long time. Distribute them to new lovers that find each other tonight. And I have a lot more in my pockets. OK. You've seen this poster. It's been designed by Alex Clay. And he's here with us. Thank you. Everybody who worked on this show did it for zil, nero, zero. So Alex, thank you very much. Signs, how to set your signs on fire. Yeah. And um, let's just start the show. There's so much to do in one hour. We got another donation from the One Minute Foundation. We have four One Minutes from a One Minute Junior Workshop in Ukraine, which was made in 2017. And we decided that we wanted to show them because of their uh, visionary quality and because um, I would like you to keep in mind and to think of how these people, how these young people, aspiring artists, are doing now. Let's have a look at the first one. Наша жизнь в Мариуполе ничем не отличается от других. Мы также играем, гуляем и живем своей жизнью. Но когда началась война и наш город попал под обстрел, мы живем в постоянном страхе, что это может повториться в любой момент.
That was Mariupol, and we all know that probably everything you saw in that video is not there anymore. So, besides all the jokes that I'm going to make and all the condoms that I'm going to distribute, please keep in mind what we're here for. Um, this afternoon, there was a workshop by Christopher Pukmir, Pukmeyer, and he just come, come to the stage, please, Christopher. Do you want to sit or stand up? Whatever you want. Well, maybe you sit down oh. for a while. Yeah. And you take pictures of the audience. Uh, I, take, I take pictures of a lot of things, especially uh, I take a lot of pictures in Odessa. Okay, when did you go there? I've been there eight times. The first time I went to Odessa was in 2013. And I've been back almost every year. Um, and I have made some really good friends there. It's Nikolai Garabinovich. Haroshi Drug, and Sofia Bulgakova. Who's Sophia. over there? Sofia is, is, is talking. <laughs> yeah, because I forgot a lot of things in my introduction. Is the list of artists that you saw are in the exhibition, but this whole day wouldn't be here without Sofia Bulgakova and Nikolai Karabinovich. Give, please give them a round of applause before we see them on stage. Sophia will come to the stage later and she'll explain how she manages. I, I'm, I wonder. She does everything. Christopher, can you hold the mic or shall I do it? I'm holding the mic. You're hiding the mic. Perfect. Um, this afternoon you gave a workshop in sign making. Yes. Is that your specialty? Are you a sign, this, this, you're a sign maker? Um, my speciality, my day job is uh, uh, advertising art director, which means that I do communications and um, basically imagery and copy. We call it copy, just words and imagery, the way they work together. So I've been doing that for 20 years, selling my soul to brands. But uh, luckily I'm freelance and um, this is actually the most interesting art and copy project I've ever done because it, I think it's a really a real channeling and focusing of all my skills into this. So your, your advertising reports. skills that you now put yeah, it's, it's into sign making. <clears throat> it's basic communication. Um, it's a mean. What do, what do you need for a good sign? What do you need? Uh, you have to speak from the heart. You have to keep it simple and clear. The best signs, I think, reference pop culture. Um, let's can we find can one. we just yeah. pick one? So um, I think this is a good one. Can this you see it? Can we take it from the? Yeah. So Z is the fascist movement in Russia, and everyone knows what control Z means. So I think this is something that anyone can understand. It's pop culture reference, but it also has a lot of meaning. It's a very powerful sign. And on the back is another sign. <clears throat> this is another one which speaks from the heart. Uh, there's a lot of metaphors going on there. You could talk about the patriarchy. You could talk all about a lot of things. Um, but I what think does it, what is no lube? No lube. It's well, you, no lubrication. Just make it hurt. Okay. Oh. Right? That's what should happen to Putin. I think he should end up in a jail cell with ten horny men for the rest of his life. Okay. Does anyone disagree with that sentiment? Now, there was one sign in particular that I like very much, but it's so small. Where is oh, it? This ah, yeah, this one. So this is a good example of playing with scale. Everyone has seen uh, Putin's table, very long table, and there's that thing about men who drive big cars or fast cars. So this one says, you know what they say about men with long tables. <laughs> so, um, the signs are going to be auctioned. And I would put your bets on this one. Yeah. Or any, but I like this one. And this it's one. practical, you can take it home yeah. in your pocket. This one's for the ladies, but I think. <laughs> Okay, this one for the ladies. Is there a, a or for the Putin fanboys? Okay. <laughs> this one is really. This one, I think, is the one that really speaks. Like this is the one that comes from the heart. Um, in August, I had an exhibition of f photographs that I shot in Odessa and in Sophia's mum's space. Sophia, Sophia's, is an amazing person, and her mum Clara is an incredible person who has opened many restaurants and she opened an art space in Odessa and she, she was great, um, gracious enough to give me my first exhibition in Odessa which means a lot to me 
and um, that space is now a bomb shelter and it made me think of just writing this sign this this sign just came off the cuff but I think it says a lot because it's really is just please just stop bombing my friends in Odessa you know? it doesn't really need explanation so Putin where's the camera stop bombing our friends in Odessa Putin hui lo Thank you, Christopher. For your book. Thank you. All these signs Peace Duke. are going to be showcased later on in the front space. Buy them, take them home, and make new ones and take them to the dump. Thank you, Christopher. That was great. A very important person you're about to see now, and I'm really honored that we can have her here. I spoke to her yesterday. She couldn't be on Zoom today, so we spoke yesterday afternoon. It's Olga Honchar. She's director of the uh, Memorial Museum Territory of Terror in Lviv, which is um, about, ter about dictatorial regimes, documentation, and the history of it. And she is, she's very young. She became a director in, when she was 24. That was in uh, 2017, so she's not even 30 now. And she has organized an enormous action to save art already from the revolution and the um, uh, occupation of the Crimea. Um, she now founded, from the first day of war, Museum Crisis Center, which is one of the goals that we're fundraising for today. And we spoke to her yesterday. And please listen to her. Memorial Museum to Territory uh, Regime Territory of Terror, uh, located uh, in the territory of uh, Lviv's ghetto in the past and transported prison in the past. And uh, also, in general, we research and talk about Nazi and communist terror in Lviv. Um, and um, uh, now, experiment ex exposition is closed, but a lot of work we do online and in office uh, of museum located. Uh, uh, like office in old flat and in the past um, in the past uh, it flat uh, was maybe private synagogue or private uh, room uh, for uh, learning Torah because when we organization reparation in uh, this office we opened this paintings uh, you can see uh, this ah, so these are historical paintings yes 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 uh, you can see these paintings, um, and now we also work to open these uh, paintings with uh, restoration. And yeah. uh, my my cabinet, my my workroom is uh, part of this process. Yes, you can see uh, this. Yeah, you started the museum crisis center from the yes. beginning of the war. Uh, yes. That's the goal that we have today yes. for a fundraiser. So can you explain us what, uh, what the Museum Crisis Center does? Uh, yes, so when war started in Ukraine, I have general questions um, uh, how we can support people who stay in Ukraine, art people, people from museum, art workers, uh, because a lot of uh, uh, support uh, organization for people and art work art workers who go out from Ukraine uh, to to Poland to, to other country and uh, I ask general questions how we can help people who stay in Ukraine stay in Ukraine yes yes, yes. and uh, um, uh, I write this question to my Facebook and my partners uh, and friends from another institution write me that all that we can do this fund together in, in Ukraine and uh, organizing this. Um, and we start work like Museum Prison Center. And uh, uh, first uh, 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 work that, that we do, we, uh, I call into all my friends, director from another museum in the region like Kiev, Lugansk, region, Donetsk, region, Kherson, um, Kharkiv, Sumy, its region which was under attack first and uh, asked to my colleagues uh, what you need to, uh, to, to survive. Yes, survive like people, 
because uh, uh, we must understand that we must protect people who work in art uh, uh, because people who work in art stay with their museum and can uh, save the collection. Yes. Yeah. And um, um, and people, my colleagues say that they don't have money for basic needs, for food, for water, for medical support, because yeah, we have situations that a, a lot of city was under attack and they don't have salary, salary from uh, government. Yeah. And um, uh, now we're organizing this fundraising and send personal donations for these uh, people to personal card to um, uh, to uh, to supporting basic needs uh, of these uh, people. Yeah. Also, we have a lot of organizations like uh, partners of Museum to the Center, like uh, Shevchenkovsky High Museum, who organize a physical support, uh, like packet materials, box, uh, and other and other. Uh, they collect this material support in, in their bus in Lviv, and we uh, share a uh, contact bus museum to the center and they organize transporting this uh, physical support to, to this museum. For me, it's very important to, uh, to be in informal um, in information uh, front to show the culture works, to show the museum, because in general, a lot of uh, media write about uh, war about uh, human, yes, uh, and it's normal, but also it's very important to show the heritage of Ukraine because heritage of Ukraine is a part of heritage of the world. And now we, we have uh, information from Minister of Culture that more than 100 objects of uh, culture, like bibli uh, bibliotheque, museum, uh, was destroyed. And, Already. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. And is in progress. Every day we have some museum who destroyed in Mariupol, uh, in Ivankiv, uh, in uh, Chernigiv. And we uh, understand that every day this heritage of Ukraine destroyed. And it's big questions for all how we can save art and heritage when we have bombing from the air. Mm -hmm. Uh, is the general questions not only for Ukraine and not only for my colleagues, it's questions for, for all. And we must understand that Ukrainian heritage and Ukrainian art is part of Ukrainian identity. And it's a general uh, answer, why Ukraine, not Russia? Because now we have situations that uh, Russia, Ukraine and Belarus like one big uh, Slavic culture, no. We one, we all different country with a different heritage, with a different a different culture code, with a different identity and culture, libraries, museum, and other and other uh, is the answer why we not Russia. T today we have situation when a museum in Ukrainian territory bombing uh, and. Also, we have situation in occupied territory of uh, Ukraine now that uh, they destroyed Ukrainian books, they destroyed uh, Ukrainian um, uh, people who have Ukrainian position, and uh, they burning books with the Ukrainian languages, with the uh, from Ukrainian literature. And uh, this is happening at the moment. Yes, in, in territory which now occupied by, by Russia. Is there anything that is, uh, I mean, if there are these things being destroyed and being burned already, there's nothing you can do anymore. How, how are things saved then at that time? It's a very big question because uh, also uh, in view, I understand that we also under attack and every day in view we uh, have uh, air warning. Uh, siren and uh, we in progress to survive to stay in Ukraine yeah. and uh, we do every day we do work to to stay alive and do work uh, professional yes yeah. like museum uh, and uh, I don't have general answer for you no. Now, now it's progress, but I believe that Ukraine wins this war and Ukrainian nation 
survived and now were uh, born in Ukraine. Uh, now uh, idea of of world of humanity uh, born of peace born in Ukraine. And uh, now we are fighting for this uh, uh, Russian terrorism uh, to save not only Ukraine, it's for save all, all, all people in all world. Because uh, Russia terrorists, um, I, I know that uh, after we in my country have future. But I don't know uh, how, uh, I don't know the future of Russia after all that uh, Russia soldiers do in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. They destroyed people, they destroyed museums, they destroyed uh, press, also international press. They destroyed uh, Ukrainian children, Ukrainian women. Uh, they bombing uh, medical hospital, ma uh, humanitarian corridors. And now all terror, uh, all evil located in Ukraine. I know that we win, we survive, but it's very long marathon. The crisis that you describe is so enormous. What, what do artists do? What can they do? Um, yes, uh, a lot of artists was evacuated to Lviv, one of Ulgorod, uh, most safe city in Ukraine, evacuated from Kiev, Kherson, Kharkiv, and other regions which now under attack. A lot of artists go to Poland, Switzerland, and other European country. But uh, now, if you uh, go to Lviv Street, you can see graffiti, you can see some paintings. Uh, it's reaction for war in Ukraine. A lot of arts now created some work uh, like reflection, uh, reflection of all uh, terror. Uh, so they take it to they take their work to the street. Yes. We have art on the street, we have art uh, on the, uh, where um, art is located, on shelter or, or, or evacuated, I don't know, they, they paint him uh, and uh, they show in situation in Ukraine and a lot of artists in other country do uh, action for support Ukraine and we in contact, we yeah. not hiding, we, 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 uh, we work. And try to be um, and try to be loud. Try to yes. be loud. Yes. Yes. And, yeah. Yes. Memorial Museum. We try to be loud. I hope you try to be loud with us. Can you maybe? because we're so quiet. I know this is long for Stampa Talk Show, 10 minutes, but it's, it's so short in terms of what is happening. So please, can we be loud today? Yes? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's have a short, short news, news clips. Uh, and of course, our, all our news is not news because it's, we've been out of the business for a year, but we went to see what is happening with art in, in Ukraine. Some clips, probably you've seen this, buildings being protected, statues being protected. We all know that this doesn't work, but still as a symbol, it's very important. Um, you have so many sand to reach to the point where it's unprotectable, in fact. Um, you know, if maybe you've seen this is already from a few years ago. Um, sometimes art can, can, or heritage can change of meaning. It's not always good to destroy things. The statue of Lenin was um, in a city near Odessa, um, was turned into Darth Vader by um, an artist um, whose name I forgot, Alexander Milov. And um, not only is it Darth Vader, uh, it also has a free Wi-Fi spot in the helmet. So make good use of your, of your, of the terrorists of the of the past. Um, probably you've heard about um, um, Maria Primachenko. Uh, that was one of the first images that we heard of that a, a complete museum of a folk artist was destroyed. Although there's some doubts whether she proclaims to be Ukrainian, 
or not, but anyhow, it was very important to hear that a, a whole collection of folk art, which is as important as the monuments, as the museums, was, was just swept away. Um, then this image, you maybe saw, this is a, a French artist who went to Lviv. This is an image from the air. It's one of the children that he met, that they are met uh, when that had fled Ukraine. He took a picture and made it into a huge screen that was um, rolled out by volunteers. And I think that the image and the film clip of it is now sold as an NFT. So um, you could also bid on that, not tonight, but uh, yeah. If you see, now people watching online, there's a QR code. Please think of Olga and think of what we're doing today and donate. Um, I would like to uh, invite now Sofia Bugakova to the stage and give her a round of applause. Hello everybody, thank you for coming tonight, thank you for being here, and thank you Stampa for organizing it and doing it with us, it's very, I'm very pleased to have you and to talk with you. We're pleased to have you. Sophia, um, you live in the Netherlands already for seven years, seven years. yeah, so um, that's about the time when the trouble started in Ukraine? Well, I was 16 when I was graduating high school in Kiev, and uh, I, my parents' restaurant, which um, Christopher already mentioned is in, also in Kiev on Maidan Square and we live also on Maidan Square. Mm. One of the streets which goes up. So I was graduating in high school when the Maidan Revolution was happening so I had to unblock the barricade to leave the house and go to school. And then after the graduation I moved to London for a year to study and then I studied my bachelor in The Hague in, in, for, in Art Science Center faculty. Mm. So I'm here since 2015. And you've been very vocal since the war started. Maybe you were always vocal. I can imagine, but you were very vocal since the war started. What, you, you organized a fundraiser in The Hague, I understood? Uh, yes. What, so what pushed you to come into action so quickly? Well, I always try to do as much action as possible for Ukraine and for what I believe in. And this is something I really believe in because it's part of my identity and who I am. And when the war started, I was in Portugal, actually. I was in, uh, preparing for an exhibition in Portugal. and. Um, Good in, in Yeah, okay, yeah. sorry. <laughs> and um, Tim Tempstra from Grey Grey Space in the Middle in The Hague, he just texted me, and many pe people texted me, saying, what can we do, what to do, what to do, what to do? And then he texted very directly, what can we do, we have a space. Yeah. And then I was like, okay, we need money. <laughs> To, and then uh, we did the fundraiser with some people who are here, with Nikolai who is here, with Ninke who is presenting the VR work, and we just very fastly in one week came up with 15 artists who are in Ukraine and Ukrainian artists in the Netherlands, and with Ukrainian art and Ukrainian music, and we just do, did it. And we sent the money to Humanitarian Fund and to Korporacja Monstriv, which is the um, uh, children's fund in Odessa, but now they specifically buy uh, medical supplies. Are you in contact with a lot of artists that are still in Ukraine? A lot of artists. Or uh, some artists? Yes, and uh, a lot of artists are now in Europe, so they, they left Ukraine, and a lot of artists which uh, we are in contact with, they're still in Kiev or in surroundings, and they're trying to leave. And some of them are in uh, West Ukraine, so in more or less well, comparable safety, or not safety, but less active zone. And tonight we have an exhibition on display, Nikolai will tell more. Um, but it's mostly composed out of artists who are still in Ukraine or who are just relocated to Europe from Ukraine. So have a look, and we're also sending some proceeds from this evening to them directly, because they ne really need support and need help to get relocated or to be, s be able to survive and live and con current conditions in Ukraine. Yeah. I want to thank you. Sophia, thank you very much. Thank you for being here. Um, and I would like to ask her colleague, Nikolai, Hi, Nikolai. Hi. Somehow no, nobody wants to use a chair, so we just do it. Well, oh, gosh. There's another condom. Somebody can. Um, Nikolai, you're um, 
together with Sophia, you organized the exhibition. There's a work of you in the exhibition as well. It's mostly video work in front yeah. and prints that are for sale, for sale. People watching t at home, you can also come here and choose your prints and buy them. But um, you can also donate, of course. Um, but in the exhibition, there's a work by you, and you chose a work which was not recent. Yeah, uh, I was grew up in Odessa and I was studied there and uh, I still have uh, so much connection to the city and uh, in my artist practice. Uh, it's super important to, to show the um, city, the history of that place and the importance of the place. Uh, it's, of, it's of Odessa specifically? Of Odessa yeah. and the south of Ukraine and Ukraine in general. And uh, it's, it's super difficult now to speak about uh, the past artworks because as an artist you always have the, um, some sort of a prediction or feeling that you can maybe change something in the future by your work. But uh, somehow after the 25th, 25th of February it's failed. But um, still, uh, it's important to look back to the history and to look back to the artworks that were created before. And, uh, so what is in that artwork that is now important again? It's a video called As Far As Possible and uh, it's a story about the group of tourists who came to the very specific place in Odessa. It's called Kuyalnik and it's a caves where people, after the beginning of the uh, Second World War, start to hide in the city. And uh, specifically this work about two minorities, uh, to which I belong, the Greek and Jewish. And uh, that place was the last, uh, last place where uh, all these Greek and Jewish people from Odessa uh, met last time and spent time together. And uh, yeah, this work is uh, speak about the importance of uh, memory and uh, event that happened many years ago, but it's still, the image, it's still very actual and very relevant to the nowadays situation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. actually it's also what Olga told about, about the history being so important and for the, the current identity, which the Russians are trying to... Uh, yeah. Uh, it, uh, looking back to the history can help us to act now mm -hmm. and uh, it's super important. I hope it's not too late, uh, but uh, yeah, that's uh, some simple things that we can do. Yeah. And uh, in uh, this uh, small exhibition uh, and the video part of the program of this evening, you can see the other works by uh, different artists from different generations, but all of them speak about the complexity of the history, complexity of the past, and uh, please spend some time, watch these yeah. videos, and uh, you become uh, more familiar with the context. It's also important. Thank you very much, yeah. Nikolai. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> we have a, a short video of what happened this afternoon, because these signs were made in a workshop this afternoon here, and then they were taken to the Dam, Dam Square. And there was a little demonstration, and we have a small video clip of the people who missed that. We are standing here with artists and creatives from Ukraine, Netherlands, and other countries, trying to raise awareness for the Russian crimes in the war in Ukraine against Ukrainian culture. We are here showcasing our signs that will be then auctioned off in V139, which is just a street away from here to raise funds for Ukrainian museums and Ukrainian artists currently struggling under the shellings of Russian army.
Uh, the woman you saw speaking organizes protests, um, I don't know if it's weekly, but often, Valeria Lukashenko. You can talk to her after she's here with us. We have a little delay in the program, but um, please go to Valeria after and ask her about her experiences. And you saw her, she's very vocal as well, and she's also loud. As we, are we loud? Yes. Okay. I would like to invite to the stage someone who has a long experience with uh, protecting uh, heritage, cultural heritage, is uh, Vanessa Fragra Pro from the Prince Klaus Fund. Hello, everyone. Hello, Vanessa. Welcome. Thank you. Um, yes, these chairs are horrible, but we'll use them. Yeah, yeah. let's use them. Yeah. Um, now, the Prince Klaus Fund, where you are um, the head of the program Cultural Emergency Response, has, been, has de dealt with cultural heritage already for, uh, for quite some time. Um, and I think up till now it was quite hard to explain why protecting art or heritage was so important. But maybe now it's different. Yeah, well, we have seen that in conflict situations, cultural heritage is being under attack as much as civilians. But the Prince Klaus Fund saw that when the Babiyan Buddhas were destroyed, so we have existed now for 17 years, but we are seeing like cultural heritage in a broader way. So culture in general is important to us. And we, so you can imagine what we do, I'm going to use a metaphor, we consider ourselves like an ambulance for culture. So we try to arrive as soon as possible when there is a disaster or a conflict. And this has been the situation in Ukraine, so we have already been working since the beginning of the war with people there. Yeah. Well, so, actually, if you've started already last year, I understood. So, actually, we, we believe that to protect culture, because in a conflict or a crisis situation, you have to prepare in advance. So, we trained people in Ukraine in 2015. Already. Yeah. Already, to understand how to react when there was a crisis and how to be able to diminish the yeah, impact as much as you can that a war is going to have in the culture. Yeah. Now, when we think of protecting cultural heritage, you think of, okay, what would happen in the Netherlands? They would probably evacuate uh, the Nachtwacht. Um, but the, your um, program is directed specifically towards smaller collections. That's right. Not the big heritage we all know, but mm. other parts of culture. Why is that? Well, uh, we see all the time in crisis situations that the cultural heritage that is considered of national importance is going to be always protected by the Ministry of Culture, by the big funders, but the fabric of the culture is more than what is considered like a um, national uh, museum is also like the small galleries, the artists. So we try to go and so see. So it also involves contemporary art. Also involves contemporary art. art. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, how we are seeing here, this is a collection of the first one that we managed to save, and is a collection of ten thousand artifacts. Yeah. And they are all like naive art or These are icons. Folk icons. Folk yeah. icons, yeah. yeah. So, so this collection has been saved now? This collection was the first that was saved the first week. And in this case, did you take it out of the country or did you, could you hide it somewhere? Yeah, a spot? friend of mine, she asked me also, what do you do with collections? Because of the legal implications that an evacuation outside of the country has, we always try to protect it and to look for a safer space in the country, okay, yeah. but some collections are being evacuated now from yeah. Ukraine. So we are starting evacuating to the European Union. Yeah. 
Um, now, when, when researching um, your program, but also you, I found that before you worked into, in, in disarming programs. I thought, wow, this, this woman has dealt with um, getting rid of chemical weapons, getting rid of all kinds of weapons. That's probably the most important thing to do. Um, so it seems like a, a strange step. What, what made you decide to, to, to go yeah. into the protection of culture? So I'm here again with my ex-colleague the, from the Organization of Prohibition of Chemical Weapons. And in 2013, we were working in Syria when the war was really affecting also cultural heritage, similar to what is happening in Ukraine. And talking to the people there, I realized how painful it was for them to lose, because they considered themselves like the cradle of civilization. And to lose, to lose this, you know that you will never get it back. So I decided I wanted to study cultural heritage and try to understand how it can be saved in a crisis yeah. situation. So. And if I remember well, there was one person who gave you a beautiful quote. Ah, yeah. Yeah, please tell it yourself, ah, yeah. yeah. Also, like, bef um, we have been working also in Beirut after the blast. So I had the chance to go there one month ago, and I was talking also to artists and to people that has lost everything because of the blast. And I say, but everyone is asking me, in the middle of a humanitarian crisis where people need food, shelter, why are we also caring about culture? And she said to me, well, saving culture is the difference between living and being alive. So this is also something really important for people. Okay. Thank you very much. The difference between living and being alive. Um, we have another one minute video. And as I said, these were made by Ukrainians and young people, aspiring uh, video artists 2017. And uh, think about this is five years ago. Now, usually at Stampa, we, I, I say we because usually I have a co-host, or I have a, a vacant position for a co-host. So if someone wants to be a co-host tonight or in a few months, you can apply. But uh, we, we always wear um, clothes by uh, young designers. Uh, in this case, our T-shirts, which makes a nice mini dress, uh, was given to us by Souvenirs X, clothes for progress, and it's for sale. So, um, Sophia is a far better model than me. She has the, uh, a, a, a skirt with it, that's not for sale. This is for sale. And, um, yeah, it must be some microphone probably. So, show the back if you want to. Bid on it, you can. Yeah. How much?
So you can bid on my shirt. If the bids are going up high, I'm prepared to take it off on stage. So still no one? I mean, this is a one-time offer. I never do this. In six years of Stampa, I never took my clothes off. No? Ten! Ten! Twenty! Okay, twenty. Uh, there are more shirts over there, but they haven't been on me. So, twenty euros? I mean, that's a H&M shirt. That's a, H &M shirt. That's a, that's a Bershka shirt. Thirty? Thirty. Up, up. I think the souvenir uh, clothes for progress said it should at least uh, be 70 euros and you see my size is an XXXL so it's both men and women I, I give I throw in two condoms um, <laughs> even one on a stick no okay I thought we were going to be loud but okay um, let's see after the show you can if you, you can do this in private I could undress privately for you but then we're talking in different prizes okay. um, so, close for progress. Sophia has a nice shirt as well. I don't know if she's taking it off, but uh, I would advise her not to because you're really, no, no. In terms of money, I'm a bit disappointed here. Okay, let's uh, invite our new, uh, next guest and give you some time to reflect on it and maybe look for money in your pockets. Pieter van Os, can I ask you to come to the stage? <laughs> Did, did you say uh, 30 euros? Yeah, but uh, I think my neighbor wants to pay more, so uh, okay, we'll get there. Okay, who's your neighbor? Uh, no, 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 we'll, we'll oh. arrange after the show. Okay, yeah, yeah in pri <laughs> also in private, so it's more expensive, you know? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Peter van Oost, we invited you here, um, journalist for NSC Hansblad. Yes, Dutch, yeah. Dutch and uh, Dutch newspaper. And you've been um, investigating uh, the case of the Crimea gold. We're talking about the history of, and the, the the difficulty of who owns who owns culture. Um, this is a specifically interesting case. Yes. And maybe in short, you can. Yeah, oh, of course, you I can, can tell you about it. In, in three maybe sentences. Maybe you already know. <laughs> yeah, in a few yeah? sentences. Okay, and stop me if it's yeah? too long. And maybe you already know about this since you're from Ukraine. Uh, there was an exhibition here in Amsterdam with uh, artifacts from Muzia on the. Crimea, we say in English, right? In Dutch, you say the Krim. What do you say in uh, Ukraine? Krim, right? Yeah. Okay. And um, then the Krim, of course, as you know, was uh, being stolen by the Russians, by Putin. And then the Dutch people of the museum, it's very close by here, didn't know what to do with the artifacts. So uh, a court case started. And, uh, but so in, in short, the appeals. problem is that you you yeah, who, who you, stuff is you it? land it from Ukraine and then you have to return it to Russia. Yeah, and it's very interesting. The Prince Klaus funds people are here too because it's a difficult question. Because I can understand it as you uh, somebody from Ukraine, especially now you're bombed, yeah. you would think, hey, that stuff is Ukrainian, so give it to Kiev. The problem is though, the stuff was most of it was uh, out of the ground at Crimea, right? So it came from the ground in Crimea. Does it belong to the people who then rule the place? Mm -hmm. Or does it belong to the museum who are on that place? Um, independent of who is the boss, yeah. right? If it is Russia, uh, Ukraine, Greece in the past, right? Uh, Ottoman Empire, doesn't matter. Yeah. It, it should be there. That's the stand of the Prince Klaus Fund, as I understand it well, mm -hmm. to keep the art as close to the place where it's from. Uh, here that was difficult because that means that Holland would have to give it, uh, it to a Russian to the Russian Confederation, right? To Russians. Yeah. So we didn't want to do that because we don't recognize, we here, the Dutch, sorry, don't recognize Crimea as being Russian. So it stayed in the yeah. Allard Pearson Museum, yeah. On this case, I have to tell you because we're going to yeah. see, uh, while we talk, we see a film clip of a film that is premiering this week, The Treasures of Crimea by Uke Hogendijk. I think it's the 10th of April, it's coming out in the, and um, has already won prizes. She had done a, a, another famous documentary on the She wins prizes every time. She yeah. wins prizes every time. <laughs> yeah. uh, this, uh, but let's, uh, we, we keep it running maybe, is, see some images of that goal. Um, and why does this case interest you specifically? Yeah, because of the, the matter I just tried to explain is like who, uh, art and heritage, 
Uh, I think there is world heritage in Ukraine and it's being threatened now. It doesn't mean it's Ukrainian heritage per se. It could be uh, heritage of us, mankind, right? Um, and that is a big issue, uh, especially nowadays. For example, just one little example. Uh, for Greece, it's very important that they get back the so-called Elgin marbles. Yeah, which are in London. Yeah, which are in yeah. London. And you could say, yeah, give them back to the people of Greece. It's complicated because are the people in Greece the natural in inheritance of that inheritance? Mm -hmm. We don't really know. We know that they don't really belong in London, right? And all this, all <laughs> this gold. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Do we know that it, yeah. it is? It's from it's the ground theirs. in that place, but it's very complicated yeah. whose it is because it's 2,000, 3,000 years old, right? So these were people that didn't call themselves Ukrainians. Mm. Right? They uh, uh, skeets, skeeten. You probably heard about them or better than we do here in Holland. Uh, from or Greece also, uh, there is even a Chinese stuff found on Crimea. So it um, doesn't necessarily have to be. No, no, no. Uh, Why does it, this case interest you in particular? Yeah, do you have any connection with that area or? Oh, I, I, for example, you saw the Darth Vader. I brought that image to Holland because I'm fascinated by uh, heritage monuments. Uh, this Primachenko you showed, the mm -hmm. paintings by Primachenko, uh, naive arts, um, stuff I like. And now in San Francisco, maybe you saw a Primachenko was painted on the floor to protest this, this criminal uh, invasion of your country. Right? Um, but I found it fascinating because the lady itself, she was Ukrainian when she died. But when she was raised a long time ago, beginning of the 20th century, she would say, I'm from here. I'm not from Ukraine, I'm not from Russia, I'm not from Poland, I'm just from here. I, I like that. I, I also don't feel very... Uh, uh, I feel I'm from Amsterdam, but I don't really feel I'm from Holland but or the, the Netherlands. So when they so say in Crimea now of, that yeah. gold is from here, Yeah. so you think they're right? It's difficult. Uke Hogendijk, the one who makes the movie, very much sides with the Musea on Crimea. Mm. Uh, I think the bombs by Putin changed everything. Right? I would say now, give it back to Ukraine, give it to Kiev. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see what happens in the future. I mean, uh, the Russians lost all their rights, right? Uh, on the other hand, it's complicated because I don't... Well, it's I, complicated because soon there won't be any museum in Kiev anymore. Yeah. If we have seen that list of, of a museum per day being destructed. Exactly, exactly. It, it's, uh, that's why I really like what Prince Klaus Fund is doing. They, for example, go to Yemen. In Yemen, um, mm. things are bombed on a weekly basis, uh, and they rebuild it while the bombs are falling. Mm. So, uh, well, there's maybe a bit of a sidetrack. Yeah, it's a bit I, of a And I think so, we have to round yeah, it up. Sorry. Uh, so, uh, in short, I, I just found it, it complicated, it, interesting uh, where heritage is from and who does it belong to. Yeah. It is. And now it's in Holland, which is absurd. Yeah. So, according to you, it should go back to Kiev. Ah, uh, no, I'm not. Uh, I think in the end it should end up in Crimea, and I hope that that place will be Ukrainian. Again. In, again. We, so do we. Thank you very <laughs> much. That's why you call out for it. <laughs> we have two more one minute films, um, and uh, let's have a look at them.
актера и заниматься не тем, кем я хочу быть. Я хочу перемен, перспектив, воплотить мечту профессии журналиста. With these, with these two small works of people that have now, are now five years old and God knows where they are, um, we end our program. I want to point out there's QR codes everywhere, there's an exhibition, there are prints for sale, there's my shirt. Yeah? Not over, I mean, it should at least be a hundred euros to get me out of my clothes, come on. Um, but okay, there was someone who wanted to arrange in private. Okay. Um, there's a performance festival going on for the evening until midnight, by, hosted by Fiber Festival, so please give them a hand as well, because what a work. And if I'm not mistaken, maybe we have already a result of how much money was raised. We don't. Well, I can tell you something. My daughter, who's studying in the art school of Breda, raised 11,000 euros last Thursday, and her art school doubled it. So, but uh, you understand that um, I cannot go home with a less than 22,000 euros. So please, uh, I, I, this small group of people, 120 maybe, 100, um, that's maybe a bit too much for you to raise. So people watching at home, there's a QR code. Please donate, it's the least you can do. You're at home, you're watching our show online. Why aren't you here? But since you're at home, it's maybe easier to donate. You're not spending your money anyway tonight, so give it to the Museum Crisis Center, the Ukrainian um, arts, our Emergency Art Fund. Just pull out your wallet, pull out your wallet, I'll pull out, I'll pull out another condom, someone? Yeah? 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 No, everybody always says you don't need it, but when you're in need of a condom, no? Blue ones? Yeah? Okay. Um, this was Stampa, number 18, a special edition, action edition. Whenever there is action need us, you can call Stampa. Huh? That's how we are. Um, I need a co-host. Apply for that. We hope to see you in July. We hope that the war has ended. And there's world peace for all. And that you stay loud. So please, are we loud? Yes! yes.